We'll try to keep it short tonight. It's late. Uh, bad luck, Daniil. I know it must be very hard to analyze now, but would have you done anything differently during the match, maybe? Have you discussed with your coach? We actually did a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit of a new press conference because I'm going to start with a short or long, I don't know, I'll try to keep it short, story of a young kid who dreamed about about big things in tennis. So when I picked up a racket when I was six years old, I mean, then the time goes fast when you're like 12. I was just, you know, practicing, playing some Russian tournaments. And of course, you're watching Grand Slams on the TV, big, big stars playing, fans supporting, and you dream of being there. Um, Start playing some uh, tennis Europe tournaments. There are, I actually remember playing Youth Olympic Games. I think it was called like Youth Olympic Festival or whatever. I made final and it was cool. We had like a center court and I think it was in Turkey. I would say there was maybe 1,000 people, 2,000, and it was really cool. It was amazing to, to be there. And that's uh, the moments where you dream of, yeah, bigger stages. So then I think the big part for every junior is playing a junior Grand Slam. That's where you can see the pros. In US Open, you actually uh, eat in the restaurant with them and some small like th things like this. There are people coming to support you, even if probably they don't really know who you are, but there are people supporting juniors. And it's great moments. Um, and that's that's a moment where you're like, wow, I want to be there in this uh, in this Grand Slams playing uh, yeah, against the best uh, people in the world. I remember when I went to, to US Open, I saw John Isner passing by and I was like, wow, he's so huge. He's bigger than on... Uh, on the TV, and it's just uh, nice moments. Um, then, I don't know, a lot of futures, a lot of challengers try to climb your way up. You start playing uh, biggest tournaments, and uh, uh, there are some moments in my career where I think this kid was doubting if he should continue to dream about these big things or not. I remember one, it was uh, I lost a really tough match uh, two times in Roland Garros actually, and I speak French. And I feel like in my age, I was maybe top five at this moment or something like this, which is not bad. And especially we have a huge generation, as you can see right now, a lot of top 10 players and stuff like this. And I remember I lost to Benjamin Bonzi, who's in top 100 now. Uh, there was, if I'm not mistaken, one Russian journalist in the room. I was like, really? It's a Grand Slam or like I was, I think I was, close to being top 50, really young. I was like, okay, that's surprising. Um, I think the journalist was Russian, so we talked for like five minutes and I like talking to journalists. Then I remember a tough loss to Pierre Gerber, 2-0 to uh, up in the sets. Uh, actually amazing match, he played amazing. Uh, and I like these matches, that's why I like tennis. Um, I, I was on the edge of breaking top 10. Um, again, in my age, I think I would be like top three. There would probably be Zverev and even maybe top two. Dominic, of course, but he's a little bit older. Uh, I came in the press. I was a little bit yeah, frustrated with the fans and everything. And so um, it's funny because I wanted to keep it short. So I wanted to like play, like answer with two words or anything. There was one journalist. Um, I think Italian, he asked me something. I answered two words. No more question. There were some Russians. They asked me some things. Again, a kid was doubting if he should continue of dreaming big. And I'm not going to explain why exactly. But today, uh, during the match, I understood that I'm going to play uh, tennis. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because uh, I was talking about journalists, but I really like talking to you guys. I mean, I think you can see it. So it's uh, that's not really the point. I'm just talking about few moments where the kid stopped dreaming and today was one of them I'm not gonna really tell why so from now on I'm playing for myself for my family to provide my family um, for people that trust in me uh, of course for all the Russians because I feel a lot of support there um, I'm gonna save in like this so if, if there is a tournament on hard courts in Moscow uh, before uh, Roland Garros or Wimbledon I'm going to go there, even if I miss the Wimbledon or Roland Garros or whatever. Um, the kid stopped dreaming. The kid uh, is going to play for himself. And uh, that's it. That's my story. Thanks for listening, guys. Now I can we can go to questions about tennis or anything. Any questions in the room? About the story, I'm not going to answer questions. <laughs> okay, Craig.
congratulations on what you've achieved. Thanks so much, Craig. Um, what are you, what are your feelings right now? I mean, you're obviously very disappointed, but is this something that in a couple of days you're going to really appreciate what what's been done? Yeah, again, if we talk about tennis, I'm not that disappointed. Like it was a huge match for sure. Some small small points, small details that I could have done better if I wanted to win. But that's tennis. So that's life. It was a huge match. Rafa played unreal. Um, <clears throat> raised his level. I mean, two sets to love up. I was like, come on, you know, just uh, just go for him, go for more. Even fifth set, I was just make him run. He was unreal. He was he was really strong. Like the way he played it. Well, I was I was even surprised. But like, of course, we know how Rafa can play. But uh, we, he didn't play for six months. He told me after the match that he didn't practice so much and it was unreal. So talking about tennis, I have uh, not much regrets. Um, I'm going to try to continue my best. Um, yeah, and I'm going to work even harder to try to be uh, yeah, a champion of uh, some of these great tournaments one day. But again, I'm not really disappointed with the loss um, and with my tennis or with, uh, with anything like this. Elena. Thanks, Daniel. The, the crowd, is that what, um, what got I'm, you I'm not going to answer it? questions about my story. Sorry, okay, Helen. Yeah, you come out and hear people booing and obviously... Uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to give one small example. Uh, so before the Rafa serves, even in the five set, in the fifth set, there would somebody be, and I would be, even be surprised, like one guy screaming, come on, Daniel, and like a thousand people would be like, tss, 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 dead silence. Before my serve, I didn't hear it. And it's uh, it's disappointing. It's... Uh, it's disrespectful. It's disappointing. Uh, I'm not sure after 30 years I'm I'm gonna want to play tennis. Ben, after 30 years old, you mean? Uh, yeah, because uh, again, I'm depends uh, people around me what they're gonna tell me, how we're gonna go through this journey together. But uh, again, the kid that was dreaming is uh, is not anymore in me after today. So, and it, uh, it will be tougher to continue tennis uh, when it's like this. How much, I guess, uh, my question is going to be how much, what did you feel change in your game or in your mind from when you had triple break point in the third set and it looked like you were really close to putting this match away pretty easy, relatively? Yeah. What, what, uh, got, what got complicated? Th that, was, uh, that was a good moment <laughs> when I had the triple break point. Uh, and uh, um, I actually remember, I don't remember all of them in details, but I remember that all the three returns I made it in. And yeah, just got a little bit tired, but again, that's that's tennis. Should have done better. Should have hit a winner. Maybe would have won the match. Uh, tactically, nothing changed. I feel like feel like I was playing right, um, but Rafa stepped up. Um, and the only thing that physically was a little bit up and down. And yeah, he was I think stronger than me physically today. Like um, starting from the third set, there were some shots and points where I was a little bit on the back foot, let's call it like this, and Rafa takes control of this, uh, these moments. But again, yeah, have to, have to work harder. Catherine, in Canada. Daniel, um, congratulations on your tournament, Thanks first a lot. of all. Um, how much of what you're feeling tonight and the story that you've just told, were you feeling before tonight? Is it just about not life? not much as I said you know there were some moments of in my career where I could adapt I, yeah, I actually forgot to tell in my story so about the kid so when I also started to get just a little bit higher like top 20 top 30 you know start to play Novak Roger Rafa uh, we made some tough matches I, I haven't beat them yet and there was a lot of talks I remember I don't think there is that much right now but I remember there were a lot of talks like young generation should do better or or there were talks like people saying we really want young generation to go uh, for it, to, to be better, to be stronger. And I was like pumped up. I was like, yeah, let's try, you know, to, to, to give them hard time and everything. Well, I guess these people were lying because, yeah, every time uh, I stepped on the court in these big matches, I, I really didn't see much people who wanted me to win. It's a, it's a cumulative. Yeah, it's a, it's a cumulative. Uh, but tonight was uh, like the epopee, or how, how you call it, like the top of the mountain. Last one, Simon. Uh, do you think it's about the, your nationality or because you're younger and, and not f as familiar? As I, th I think nationality plays a key because, well, uh, it's just uh, that uh, 
Russian tennis was a little bit down for some time. So uh, I think to, to get, I, I'm trying really, and I, f I feel there is a lot more buzz about tennis in Russia right now with, with me, Andre Carr and Aslan doing big things. And that's great. So uh, hopefully, you know, we'll try to, to get more people to, uh, to go for us. But uh, yeah, I can definitely see uh, when you play in somebody from the other country that just uh, they would go for them and not for Russian or something like this. We'll take one online question and it will come from Willie ESPN. Hi, Daniil. When you came back from two sets down to Felix, you said that you at one time said to yourself, you want to think about what Novak would do. You asked yourself, what would Novak do? Today, seeing how Rafa came back from two sets down, what do you hope to learn from what he did from that moment on? Well, Rafa is a lefty, but next time I'm probably going to say <laughs> when two sets to love down, uh, just do it like Rafa did against you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, again, the way he played today, I don't even want to say fight. We all know Rafa fights. You know, it's it's not going to be surprising if I say this suddenly, wow, Rafa fight it today in the final of the slam. But uh, the way he managed to play throughout all these sets, even in the tough moments, uh, and again, it's for him, it's for making the history. So even if for sure he tries not to think about this, it must have been somewhere in his head and huge respect. Like, yeah, huge respect for beating me because I tried my best. Like, I, I really tried.